Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Logic Medico. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I request you to subscribe the subscribe button and the bell button for the latest notification. Today's topic of interest is thyroaretinoid muscle. It is one of the intrinsic muscle of the larynx. So let's see what is there in this muscle. The thyroaretinoid muscle. Over here, this is the thyroid cartilage, the inner surface of thyroid cartilage. Okay. This is the vocal cords. This is the retinoid cartilage, pyramidal shaped cartilage sitting over the cricoid cartilage. You can see the vocal cords here. So, within this vocal cord on the inner surface of the thyroid angle going towards the retinoid is the location. So, within the larynx, so it is an intrinsic muscle of larynx, within the thyroid angle. And within the vocal folds, that is a mucous membrane. If the mucous membrane is shown here, you can't see the muscle. So it has been removed so that you can see that muscle. The location includes within the thyroid cartilage, within the vocal folds. So, what is the origin of this muscle and what is the insertion of this muscle called thyroaretinoid muscle? As the name suggests, thyro should be thyroid cartilage, aretinoid means aretinoid cartilage. But where exactly? Inner surface of the thyroid angle. It goes backwards and slightly upwards to the anterior lateral surface of the retinoid cartilage. I repeat, inner surface of the thyroid angle it goes backwards and upwards to get attached to the anterior lateral surface of the retinoid cartilage. So, the movements possible in the vocal cord is if the both vocal cords move away from one another in the midline. So, it is called abduction of vocal cord. If they move towards one another, it is called adduction of vocal cord. But here, since this muscle is present within vocal cord, it cannot abduct or adduct the vocal cord. It will cause change in the tension within the vocal cord. So, I will tell you now two things here. Just observe this carefully. You can see the tension within the vocal cord. Here. Here you can see it is not that much tensed. If you carefully observe, so there is wrinkling, wrinkling in the vocal cord. Huh? Here it is tensed. So the tension within the vocal cord can be altered. Either it can be a tensor of vocal cord or relaxer of vocal cord. What does this help in? This helps in voice modulation. Hello, if I want to tell, I want to tell, if I want to whisper. So this voice modulation. It is very very important for human being and their expressions. So tension within the vocal cord is altered by today's muscle. It is thyroaretinoid. So what does this thyroaretinoid do? See it is within the vocal cord. I am giving you a clue. You should tell this. Within the thyroid cartilage, it goes and gets attached to the anterior lateral surface of retinoid cartilage. So when this muscle contracts, when this muscle contracts, what do you think happens to the length of the vocal cord? Will it stretched will it get stretched to become tensed like this or the distance between the two is reduced to become relaxed like this and give five seconds just think what do you think will happen when this muscle contracts the distance between the two thyroid and retinoid will it get stretched to become tense like this or it will reduce to become relaxed like this if you are told it will reduce and it is causes lacking that is relaxation, then you are told the correct answer. It is a relaxer of the vocal cord. The thyroarteroid muscle will relax the vocal cords. Now supplying as usual, all the muscles of the larynx are supplied by vagus nerve or the tenth cranial nerve. Tenth cranial nerve will give one branch above and below superior laryngeal nerve, inferior laryngeal nerve. Inferior will go all the way and wind around the arch of the and come back. Called recurrent laryngeal now on the left side arch of aorta on the right side subclavian artery, but it is called recurrent laryngeal now. All the muscles of the larynx are supplied by recurrent laryngeal now. This is the recurrent laryngeal now between the trachea and esophageal group, except one muscle. That muscle is cricothyroid muscle. This is the muscle which pulls the thyroid cartilage forward and thereby causes tension in the vocal cord, it causes raise in the voice of the person. Okay. So, this is supplied by external laryngeal nerve. Other than this muscle, cricothyroid muscle, all the muscles are supplied by this one, recurrent laryngeal nerve. So, even here, thyroid is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve. If at all there is a thyroid gland swelling, 
or any problem in the trachea or esophagus this nerve will get damaged the time all the muscles of the vocal cord will be paralyzed except the cricothyroid muscle whereas damage to this external laryngeal now that happens during thyroidectomy removal of the thyroid gland endocrine gland if a surgeon accidentally damages this nerve then the person cannot raise their voice so they can't become teacher they can't become singers damage to the external laryngeal nerve results in paralysis of cricothyroid so tension in the vocal cord cannot be raised so the person can't raise their voice that is the logic behind that okay i hope you understood thyroid it is a relaxer of vocal cord you want to speak softly and gently with the patient you have to know how to use your thyroid muscle so that it will relax your vocal cord like and share this video with your family and friends press the don't forget to press the thumbs up button in this video subscribe to my channel and press the bell button for the latest notification thank you